Every day I wake up to something new in the Hoyoverse world, and today was definitely no exception. Instead, today was a massive day for changes, as we have a response. Yes, they have finally responded to the boycotting and the, I think I read somewhere people use the word riots, a virtual riot at least, people be boycotting fried chicken. That's crazy. Anyways, let's talk about it. Now, before we jump straight in, we need to understand a few things here, all right? Because it's very easy to come up with a few short-sighted conclusions, but this issue is a bit bigger than you may think, and I will explain it right now. And the only way to do that is to start all the way from the beginning. And by beginning, I mean when HSR was released. Because I think I can say for a lot of us, that's when these issues really started to boil up. Because Genshin had nothing else to compare itself to. So if players felt dissatisfied, they really couldn't say anything apart from compared to other games. But then when the Voyeurverse released their second, um, yeah, things got a bit messy. That's when the Civil War officially started, okay? And this happened because when Honkai Star Rail first released, it released to the public with great reception and honestly had big, big numbers in terms of sales. And uh, yeah, it was obvious where Hoyoverse was spending a lot of their dev time and money that they were getting from Genshin, making this new game. Now, personally, I've actually been playing a lot of Honkai Star Rail. I just don't talk about it too much on this channel. It's pretty fun. I do like it. I do like it. I do have some per personal grabs to the game. But in general, you can tell that they made this game after they made Genshin purely because they have more experience, okay? You can tell which game is newer. There's, there's no doubt about it. But that's not what we're here for. Anyway, as soon as Honkai Star Rail releases, it gets better quality of life updates and better rewards than Genshin. Now, some things are easily justifiable and some things are just not. Like, for example, Honkai Star Rail gets auto expeditions and easier ways to collect daily rewards as opposed to Genshin. Just getting those things just one or two months ago. I'm glad we're getting these changes in Genshin, but one game releases with them and one game takes years to get the same thing. Now, there are reasons for this. I'm not gonna beat around the bush at this point because that's a bit more of a complicated topic. I don't want to simplify it down too much. And then the next big event, the Game Awards. Yes, we gotta go back to the Game Awards. So Genshin had its big release 4.0 releasing underwater. Massive, massive new gameplay changes. The game is doing quite well. A lot of people are coming back. Uh, so honestly, Genshin players are honestly hoping to take home an award this year. But unfortunately, uh, they lose every category they were in. And we only won the PlayStation Awards. But HSR does win. They win the Best Mobile Game of the Year award. Which is pretty good, pretty good for them. Because of the recent success of winning multiple awards, not just the game awards, there was a few other ones like the iOS Game Store game and stuff like that. But they get treated to a 5 star, yes a 5 star. Now this is huge, this is absolutely huge. The first day this came out, Twitter went wild. They went crazy, everyone is just hating on Genshin saying L ratio, Genshin could never. I remember reading Twitter posts and memes for hours that day. It was it was quite funny. Instead of people being happy for Star Rail, they were just dunking on Genshin, which is just quite funny. Just be happy for yourself. Don't start kicking the other game. And the only other five star Genshin has ever given out for free was Alloy. And we don't need to talk about Alloy, do we? We don't need to talk about Alloy, okay? We just we're just gonna leave that. Throw Alloy out of here. I don't think anyone really cares, can't lie. With Genshin players coping, I say this as a Genshin player myself, why this feels so bad? Because we followed Hoyoverse since day one, a lot of us. A lot of Genshin haters turn out to be people that really spent a lot of hours and sometimes a lot of money into the game as well. And it's kind of disheartening to see one game get treated so good and other game get kicked to the side. It just doesn't seem right. Not at all, it kind of hurts a tiny bit. I am on the believer that you don't need free stuff to make people play the game. If the game is good, it should be all right. But then mistreatment is just mistreatment, okay? Uh, there's one thing that happened that really rubbed me the wrong way and we'll get into that in just a moment. So with all of this going on, fans eagerly wait until the Lantern Rite, which is a big celebration for the Chinese New Year. We have this event in Genshin where we tend to get a lot of, you know, free stuff to celebrate. And uh, everyone had some high hopes. We had some high hopes this year, you know? They, they've been quite generous, you know, they gave out Dr. Ratio for free, uh, they've been expecting a lot of things, you know, you've been seeing Honkai Star Rail rewards. We kind of thought this is going to be our moment, they're going to give us some good stuff. This is also a big point, there was a leak going around about a skin selector that will be available for people to use in the Lantern, right? Allowing you to pick a free skin or free 4 star skin. 
A lot of people are really excited about this. This will at least be something for us, okay? No, but instead we got three new skins that you can pay for. A lot of people weren't happy about that. And the only thing we were getting was a 10 pull like usual, a three four star a selector like usual. So it doesn't really seem like a big point when it's the third anniversary. You know, you want to make it a bit, a bit special. That's fine. But all in all, keeping the rewards the same is okay. But this is the point, like it's okay. It's not the end of the world, okay? No, it's fine. It's fine. We can cope, all right? But this is the point that really took the cake. This is the point where it just, you know, it went from this is okay to this is disrespectful. Just straight up disrespectful from the developers. So from the exact live stream, we were expecting some big news, some, you know, some love from the developers. We got this cruel joke. They said, and this is translated, rewarding your three long years of support, we will be giving you three wishes. Now, honestly, if they if they if they never said anything, it would have been fine. But that that just takes the mick. That's like a slap in the face. You supported your game for three years and you're giving us three wishes. I wouldn't care if they said nothing. And we just got the the standard ten pull, a four star leeway character selected. That would be fine. No problem with that. But basically saying thank you for funding us for three years. Have three wishes. Slides three wishes across the table. No, that's that's where it takes the cake. And that is exactly when all hell officially broke loose. From this point, I did make a video 4.4. Uh, people were saying, why are you saying it was bad? And that was because I saw a lot of people really dissatisfied in the live stream. But the key issue here was that there was fairly silent cries of despair, okay? It wasn't too vocal. One or two YouTubers made videos saying it was a bit underwhelming. There was a recent drama where... Uh, Zyox made a meme about Doro and Tectone. Uh, but apart from that, it, it wasn't that it wasn't that much of a big issue over here on the English speaking side of Genshin. But while we were all sleeping, China went crazy. They got up and they started rioting. They started boycotting. They started voicing their opinions and they did not rest easy. On the Chinese version of TikTok, Douyin, they had a massive, massive, mass unfollowing. I believe up to 3 million followers, but I know 1 million, at least 1 million. So that's absolutely gigantic. That is gigantic. And uh, not only that, they started boycotting Genshin and other companies, other adjacent companies that they have worked with in the past. KFC and Pizza Hut. Yes, boycotting fried chicken. Absolutely wild. I'd never thought I'd hear the day Genshin players are boycotting fried chicken, but here we are. What did the developers do? What did they do? Now, I was scared. I can't lie. I was scared. I had no idea what they did. And they kind of did come up with a soft response. You know what that soft response is? Buying bots to follow them back to hide the drama. Yes. So that's what I thought their response was. I mean, there were really only two responses. Ignore the drama or talk about it. I assumed they did the first one. Hence why they decided to keep a very silent response not trying to really make a big deal about it by buying back bots. And that's when I got pretty upset because buying bots to cover up this big issue that people are saying, hmm, kind of making it seem like the genre brush it under the rug like nothing happened. But luckily, luckily there was more to it. And let's get straight into it. This is not where this story ends because we have some official updates this is the latest information regarding this topic, and yep, there, there have been some changes. The CN players did not stop their mass unfollowing and boycotting companies. Chinese Genshin players actually review bombed Genshin, and quite a lot. I mean, look look at this. This is, uh, that's a lot of people that are very unhappy. I'm not 100% sure of the platform. I believe it's Billy Billy, but yes, I mean, just look, look, the numbers don't lie. Now, in response to this, the developers did respond. Yes, we did get a response and let me show it to you right here. And the two main things about this response that we got was that firstly, they said they're going to work in communication. Now, I was a bit annoyed because like, we are annoyed because you took the mic by the way you said it. But also, the rewards are absolutely garbage. If you just give us a tiny, something a bit better, then yeah, it would be alright. Then communication wouldn't be so bad. I mean, they're both terrible. They're both terrible. The communication plus the rewards is absolutely disgraceful. I did not like that at all. Not good. Uh, so yes, they were working communication. But when I read that, you can't just pass it off as a communication issue. You also got to back it up with some changes you need to make. 
and that's where they also said they will adjust the rewards due to the massive backlash. Now, we don't know what this means or how it's going to change as it's not a easy fix. And I'll tell you why. Because how do they even fix a situation like this? I spent some time brainstorming and I realized it's, it's not as straightforward as it seems as throwing free stuff is only going to be a band-aid to this problem. Like it will make people happy for a month maybe, but it's still not going to be so good. Even so, choosing the temporary reward to make players feel better is still kind of difficult. Because think about it, we have a few options. And coming in at the worst option is just more free wishes. Upping the number from 3 to 6 to 9 to 10. Hmm, not very good, I'll tell you why. I mean, Genshin players will be happy with anything at this point. But just another 10 pull? I mean, you're not guaranteed anything, let's be honest. If you just got a 5 star and your pity has been reset, even if you have 50 pity, you, you could get nothing out of this. Even with a 20 pull. So... Imagine your your reward for all of this is basically nothing. Your pity is slightly higher. I don't think anyone would want anything that's not guaranteed. So you have a middle option, which I would say is a skin selector. But the issue with that, it kind of ruins the marketing campaign even in China, as they're giving it out for the PS5. Why, why are they going to do? Give out two skins for people who bought the PS5? Hmm, kind of ruins what they're trying to do over there anyway. And they've probably spent a lot of money on that. I, I'm not quite sure. Now, the better option out of here would be giving away uh, some larger content for free. So, such as a free, another free four star. But instead of just leeway, choosing from all the four stars that have been released. Or, which would be crazy, a free five star. Personally, I don't care too much about five stars. If you give a five star to everyone, it doesn't really feel so special. That being said, I have played uh, Hankai Star Rail and Dr. Ratio. He's absolutely amazing. I do love his gameplay. I love his design. He's very fun to play. But my point still stands. If everyone gets a 5 star, it doesn't really feel that special. But that's me yapping, alright? I know you guys want a 5 star, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep talking. I'll keep my opinions to myself on that one. That will put the band-aid on the situation and make people happy temporarily. But there's more to talk about here and we need a serious discussion about about why this is such a big deal okay but before we do that we need to talk about why this happened i know we went over the recap but there's a conversation that we need to have about why this all happened in the first place and honestly it's because of the civil war between genshin and honkai star rail now it would be okay or passable if both games got the same treatment so the genshin treatment like honkai star rail came out but when the long-term supporters of Hoyoverse, the people that, you know, that really got into this, I'm not even talking about Hunkai 3rd here, okay? Genshin fans, you know, when, when they became fairly big and they dipped their toes into making these larger games, it would be okay. You know, we could both, both communities could have Stockholm Syndrome together. This led to a lot of arguments about which game is better, which game is better. And there was kind of fighting between the communities, but at least now we're fighting, you know, people are talking about, you know, the company in charge of both of them. But because of the blatant ignoring of the Genshin community, people kind of started, they had something to compare their mistreatment to. And that's kind of when it got, all got kicked off. That alongside with the fact that Honkai Star Rail did get more content, like endgame content, like simulated universes, for example. Something the Genshin community has really been asking for a long time, and we just don't really have much to do there. Now, personally, again, Again, gonna put my uh, my unrelated opinion in because uh, my takes are never the best if you have to watch any of my videos I said yeah yeah belongs in the trash and then uh, <laughs> yeah a lot of people had a lot of fun things to say about that back to the point I personally have a lot of fun playing Genshin because when I play games I like doing things that are not the correct way to do things as you can see in my videos such as soloing bosses as level one boss speed runs um, soloing bosses and such like that I like to make my own fun. Genshin, there's a lot to do there. It's just the reward system is a bit off. There's a lot to do, but people only want one thing, and that's wishes. We are basically drug addicts. We just want one thing and one thing only. That's not even a cope. It's just how it is, okay? What have they done to us? Now, is this something we can do? Why I say this is because a lot of people are pretty disheartened at this point. Like, when I see a lot of content creators talk about this topic, Apart from the bald man, who is always shouting about pretty much everything he talks about. That guy needs a, a volume filter. A lot of people don't really believe there's much to do because they're not going to do anything. 
Now, at first I was like, wait, why? Why not? I'm sure if we bring it up to them, they will have to do something because we we're the players at the end of the day. But let me explain why a lot of people are quite depressed about this topic and why everyone kind of feels like this is a losing battle with not much to change. Number one, the amount of new players joining Genshin is much higher than the players leaving. Number two, by the time these new players get to the struggles that a lot of people complain about, they'd probably be a year into the game as a whole and would have spent some money or, you know, dumb their time. Number three, the company still makes more than enough money regardless because of the influx of new players and people are still going to buy the content. So from a company business perspective, there's nothing wrong. People are going to forget about this drama, but this drama is actually going to push Genshin to, you know, more people. More people are going to see it, more people are going to dip their toes into Genshin, thus the cycle continues. Business perspective, it's, it's going to be maybe a, a slow month, but for them, they're still going to get their money coming in, especially it's going to be subside with the money coming in from Honkai Star Rail, because, I mean, at the end of the day, money's money. And money is what makes the world go round. And number four, the EN voice is too small, and honestly, the entirety of the EN community could boycott, and they could probably live without them. These are the arguments I've heard from a lot of people. Not just one isolated person, but this is the common ideas that everyone seems to share. This mentality isn't great because it doesn't really push Hoyoverse to change. Now, I don't mean this from a selfish point of view where I want more stuff from Hoyoverse. Give me more stuff. I don't care about your dev time or your devs. Work harder. No, I want the game to succeed. And if this game was to succeed in the long run, Changes need to be added, and this isn't coming from a toxic perspective. This is coming from a positive point because we there's a lot of new games coming out. Weathering Waves is coming out. A lot of people are comparing it to Zenless Zone Zero, even though they're not really comparable. It's more compared to more comparable to Genshin. Now, with more games coming out in this space and knowing the pitfalls that Genshin has, it'll be very easy for them to adjust to those changes. And with that have more success from Genshin and of course Genshin is a game that's already been developed and because of that it is a lot harder to make even simple changes to the core gameplay it's not easy to change a game once it's already been out unless you do a massive overhaul and I just don't see a massive overhaul of Genshin being possible at all just from a technical perspective the game is just too large so unless Genshin and Hoyoverse start adapting for these new competitors early they potentially can you know risk getting forgotten about when the new games come out and there are new games coming out all the time it's just waiting for the one that will actually kick the bucket for them now it Genshin is a great game but it doesn't mean it's perfect there's definitely places that we can be worked on I love playing Genshin the problem is I want to play it more I'm a degenerate I want to Play the game for hours if possible, and apart from just doing the story, well, you know, once you've done that, it's done. There's not much to do. Uh, I want to be able to spend hours doing mindless things, and uh, I don't mean farming items, and yeah, that's all I do in Genshin. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, like, it's just, I want there to be something on the same level as simulated universe from Honkai Star Rail. And without these changes... Genshin is going to struggle in the next, maybe not in the next six months or coming months, but in the next few years. And I really want this game to succeed and not because I spend money on it, but I did spend money on it and I'm a poor student. So please make my money worth it. Jokes aside, some of you may, may be thinking, well, like you said, we can't, we don't have that much of a voice. We can't change anything. But there have been a few examples of changes that were made to the game because of the community. The first is the Zhongli buff. Yes, they buffed a pre-existing character, which is a bit odd because um, you can't really do that because technically they're paid content. I'm not too smart on the legal reasonings, but I'm pretty sure you can't adjust stuff people have already paid for. That's why they don't do it too much, I believe, but I could be wrong. And that's probably why they haven't done it since. So because of the backlash, Zhongli did get buffed way back when he came out. And also the weapon banner. And that's where Dr. Eggman comes in again because every video I turn up about Genshin, he won't he won't be quiet about he apparently single-handedly changed the weapon banner. I don't know how truthful that is. I don't know if Dr. Eggman led the army to change the weapon banner, but I'll take his word for it. So changes can be made. And now the changes that we should make aren't just more free rewards because that's not going to push the game in a better direction. It will only be a band-aid to stop people complaining. What they should do is add some end game content of sort. 
Now, what I'm going to do is release a follow-up video talking about the possible endgame content that can be added to the game and how to fix potentially fix Genshin. And if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe for that because I've been rambling for too long. But endgame content would probably be good. Uh, follow for that. Now, get out of here.